You know, for me, it's an honor to sit next to you guys, but it's a bigger honor to sit next to Ernie Johnson. Every time I hear a story, because I've never heard that story, I don't know if you guys heard that story, it's just wow. You know, for me growing up, I always said to myself, if, if three people know who I am, who I am, I made it. Dick Vitale, Bill Rafferty, we all know who he is, and Ernie Johnson. And you know, me and Ernie Johnson, we always talk about 1989. But in 1989, he came to my house. I was like, Ernie Johnson's in my house. And he was nice, he's polite. Ernie is the perfect gentleman. Never seen him bash a player. He's always positive, he's always upbeat. And then when I got here, you know, got to work with him and they did the special on him, it was another while. I, I never knew he adopted all those children. <clears throat> he brought me to his house. I met Michael, Michael, and I was embarrassed that Michael knew more about cars than I did. We had a conversation about cars. Michael was asking me all these questions and, and I didn't know. But we're hurting right now because Ernie is a brother. You know, he's more than, than, than you know, a brother to me. He's someone that, of course, I looked up to him. I'm sure we all looked up to him. And, when I got the text that day, it just, it just hurt. You know, I'm still kind of hurt from my sister and the past from Kobe. I'm just trying to get over that. But to see a great man like this hurt, it just makes all of us hurt. So Ernie, you know I love you. You know we love you. Condolences to you and your family. And, uh, you know, whatever you need from us, you know I'm going to be there for the rest of my life. We go back since 1989. Thank you for always being nice to me. Thank you for allowing me to meet your family and hang out with your family. And I know you're hurting. And take your time coming back, brother. So I know you and Michael had a routine. And, you know, I'm a creature of habit. And, you know, sometimes when you have to change your routine suddenly, you don't know what to do. But I know you're going to figure it out. You're great, man. Take your time coming back. We love you. And we miss you. And we support you, brother. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree with you, Shaq. I think, you know, I've been obviously here the longest with Ernie. And it's, uh, I always say it's the gift and the curse of you guys becoming brothers. And, and when we say brothers, you know, you hear that a lot in sports. But when you spend time with, you know, 20 years or more, you know, with someone, with yourself, with uh, Shaq and Charles, you know, and, and Ernie, you know, there's, you're, you're part of every moment in their life. You're, you know, when, when Ernie wins his first Emmy, we're there. When he has his first grandchild, we're there. When when uh, you got you make the Hall of Fame, we're there. Like we're we're there at all the great moments. That's the gift. But then the curse is, you know, when you love someone and you and you're and you're part of this is also, you know, you're part of these moments. You know, we part when your your mom mm -hmm. and grandma passed. When my mom passed away. When Kobe and your sister and now Michael. And uh, he would have loved you today, though, Shaq. That, that car you brought today, <laughs> he would, Michael would have yeah. been going crazy today. And uh, I, mean, I mean, you know, to, to, to see him and as he, when Ernie would bring him and, you know, he and his wife, they would come around with Michael. You know, he would I, I, we always talk about lighting up a room, but it, it's always it's a gravitational pull. Like, like some people have a gravitational pull no matter who they are and how they are. And Michael had a gravitational pull that you would move towards him in that respect. Um, Ernie is usually, for those who don't know, Ernie's usually the person that we lean on. So Ernie, this is the first time you need to lean on us. You know, Chuck, I agree. When I got the call over the weekend, I was heartbroken, obviously for Michael, but I was really heartbroken for Ernie and Cheryl Ann because just watching that story just make me appreciate them more. I mean, I've heard the story. I've seen that story. You knew the story. You knew the story. But for them to adopt a kid they know got special needs, to change his life forever. And she said in that phone call, I would spend the rest of my life wondering what happened to that kid. But she doesn't have to worry or wonder because they gave Michael a wonderful, a wonderful life. They love that kid. Uh, I would not personally have the courage to do that personally, to, to, to adopt a kid and have to do all the things they did. 
but it, my admiration for them grows. And man, they gave him a wonderful, wonderful life. I know they're hurting right now. I know Eric and Maggie are probably hurting also, the, the other kids. But I just think, man, it just, that story just makes me appreciate Ernie and Cheryl, Cheryl Ann, uh, for her to make that sacrifice. Uh, that just shows you what type of guy we're working with. Uh, and I tell people, I say, yo, man, Ernie's the best dude in the world, but I want to give Cheryl her flowers too uh, because she made the final decision. I mean, we do know Ernie's a house husband. She make all the final decisions. But to give that young man a wonderful life, uh, I'm just proud to say, man, I work with Ernie Johnson and Cheryl Johnson. Uh, it's just a privilege. And uh, we're all hurting right now because the Godfather's hurting. Uh, but... Uh, Man, it just it just sucks, plain and simple. But we know we love the Godfather and Cheryl Ann, and we all just gotta hang in there. That's all we can say.